Drawing with the Grid Method, brought to you by Total Drawing. Start with your paper wider than it is tall. And let's begin by putting marks one inch apart around all four sides of our page. The zero mark is right on the perforated edge in this sketchbook. Start with your zero mark on the same perforated edge edge along the left side of your page and continue downward making marks every inch. When making a grid it's really important to have marks across from one another that is on both the left and right side and along the top and the bottom. When we connect these marks our grid lines will be perfectly parallel Let's start that now. If we only made marks along one edge of the page, one inch apart, and then tried to keep our lines parallel, we might not be able to do so as easily as if we have marks across from one another that we can simply connect. Once your grid is done, you want to make sure that you have the same number of squares on your drawing paper as you do your photograph. You can draw a grid on the photograph as well. I put a grid on this photograph digitally. Notice where my numbers and letters are. This photograph has 10 columns and 7 rows. The columns are marked from A to J. So you want to start the A in the second column and the number 1 in the second row. If you use a 9 by 12 sheet of paper, you'll have an extra column and extra row along the right and the bottom. The sketchbook page is slightly smaller than 9 by 12. All right, so it looks like we can start our shoe in row 6, column A and I think that the best way to work through a grid drawing in in this case with a subject like this is to work around the entire subject that is both of the shoes as so they're one large shape. This will really separate the shoes from the background. After that we can get inside of the shape of the shoes and work on shoestrings and eyelets and other smaller contours. Notice I'm in row 4, column D. You want to check to make sure you're in the right row and column periodically, just to make sure your eyes haven't skipped over a row or column. If they have, you'll eventually know it because you'll see a proportion problem in your subject. Ideally, drawing with a grid solves these proportion problems. The grid helps us to get the contours of our subject and the details of our subject to land very close to where they belong. Even if we're not drawing in exactly the right place inside of a block, as long as a part of the shoe that we're drawing is in the correct block, it's going to be very close to perfect. Once the contour drawing is complete, we can still go back and make small adjustments to where some of our lines landed for accuracy and, and unity. All right, so the overall shape of our subject is nearly complete. At this stage, it's a good idea to take a moment and just analyze what you've drawn and again double check that you haven't missed a column or row that your subject doesn't look a little too skinny or wide or short or tall. If everything looks alright at this point let's go ahead and get into, into some of the contours on the inside of our subject. I still like to start with some of the larger lines and so where the sole meets the canvas and the the rubber toe of the shoe, I like to find that early and then start working on strings and eyelets.
There's so many small parts inside of these shoes, this video will not show every mark. Hopefully by watching segments of the drawing being made, you'll be able to repeat these steps and complete this drawing and others like it on your own. Sometimes a small part, like an islet in this case, just floats out there in the middle of a block. Without touching the edges of a block, it's difficult to place small parts like this. You can X out or draw lines from opposite corners to opposite corners inside of a block on your photograph, if it is a printed photograph, and in doing so you'll identify the very center of the block and those extra lines will act as landmarks helping you to draw in that smaller part that previously had floated in the middle of a block um, not touching any of the grid lines. This photograph does include a small Converse logo. It's kind of in a shadow but I do want to draw it in make sure it's visible. Now remember with these shoestrings and in fact the outer contours of these soft canvas shoes. If your marks are a millimeter off here or there or even a little bit more, your drawing is still going to look great. It's still going to look like a pair of Converse shoes. These shoestrings are not made of stone. They just landed this way and when the shoes are moved, they'll move. So we just need to um, capture the essence of these shoes and that is these types of contours, they're slightly slightly wavy, gentle curves, but uh, if we draw a mark a little high or a little low, it's still going to look like shoes. They're still going to look like shoestrings. Once we get into some of these smaller areas, it's probably not a bad idea to kind of work block by block trying to get most of the lines or hard edges that you see in a given block, go ahead and try to get those in place before moving to the next block because it is easy to lose your place as you get into some of these uh, smaller details. In this drawing, there are a few places where the shadows are so dark it is a little difficult to see the contours. So you may have to do a little bit of imagining. Or if you can't see where a line or a contour belongs, you can just leave it out. And when we shade over that area and make it dark, um, it'll look realistic. We won't see the details in that area. Just like in the photograph, maybe we don't see the details due to the darkness. All right, we're closing in on the end of this contour line drawing using the grid technique. I do want to include some of the shadows. It's a strongly lit subject and the shoestrings are casting some bumpy or wavy little shadows across the shoes. And those are such hard edge shadows, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and draw those in. Having done so, it's time to erase. Take your time erasing and you may need to sort of sharpen or redraw a few lines after you have erased most of your grid lines. Um, remember, if you've drawn your grid lines lightly, they'll completely erase. That's it. This is the completed line drawing. The next step will be to add value according to a value scale. Thanks for watching.